welcome out to the house of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. What a wonderful night we are going to have in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just lift up our hands. Our church lift up our hands. Welcome Facebook. Those of you that are viewing, we have come to worship the Lord tonight. Jesus, we just love you tonight, Jesus. We love you. We appreciate you. We honor you. We lift you up tonight, Jesus. We're here to take some moments, God, out of our day, Jesus, just to bless you, Jesus. We put our day aside, God, and we, we focus on you, Jesus. We focused on so many other things today, God, but right now, as your presence is falling, we focus on you, Jesus. We put everything else aside, God, and we just want you to know that we love you and we have come to worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in your truth. And I will daily lift my hands. For I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of 
filled my life upon your love. It is, it's a firm foundation, and I will put my trust in you. Hallelujah, Jesus. life upon him tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's nobody like Jesus. I want you to tell your neighbor that. Tell him there's nobody like Jesus. Nothing better you could build your life upon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just stretch up our hands one more moment and just thank him. Just praise him. Hallelujah. Praise him that you're standing on the solid rock tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Well, God bless you tonight so wonderful to be here. You've been, uh, if you've heard messages from me up to this point for the last year and a half, it's, it's been over Facebook, so I'm glad to be standing here before you, uh, bringing a word. Amen. Now, I'm a little froggy tonight, but uh, they were playing this song beforehand. Uh, maybe we just sing this chorus. It d doesn't necessarily relate to my message, but maybe somebody needs to hear it tonight. Uh, we're going to sing uh, Still I Will Trust You. Maybe in um, the key. Maybe C. Hallelujah. If you're going through a struggle tonight, this song is for you. Hallelujah. Still I will trust you. Still I will follow. Still I will listen to your every calling while the storm rages on and I can't find my way. Still I will trust you. I 
and we'll listen to your every, every calling while the storm, while it rages on. Keep trusting in him. Still I. Come on, sing it. Come on, sing it tonight. Still I will follow. Still. I still have a reason to trust you, Jesus. Because you have not changed. In spite of the storm. In spite of the trial. You are still good. And you are still God. And I will. You've come too far to turn around now. I said you've come too far to turn around now. Hallelujah. He brought you this far, didn't he? Hallelujah. It pays to trust in Jesus. It pays to put your life in his hands. It pays to believe him all the way to the end. I will. Still I will trust. Still I will trust you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I wish you'd tell somebody you don't always have to see where you're going. Come on, tell them. You don't always have to see where you're going. Just hold on to the one who knows where he's going. And he'll lead you through tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, y'all, if you know me, you know that um, song was really the first ministry. So I feel like I could just take off running with that but I do believe that God has something for me to say to you tonight. But I still feel that stirring, so if I break out in the song somewhere, don't be surprised. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> still I will trust you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, man. I should have left that one alone. Now I, I don't know how to, I'm having trouble feeling like I can shift gears, you know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, if you... If you saw on Facebook tonight, the, the title of the message is Assemble Yourselves. Assemble Yourselves. Hallelujah. 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 Before we get started, let's, let's pray. Let's pray the Lord helps me to stay in the message and not break out into another, another song. Hallelujah. Oh, let's just take another moment. I, I still feel something stirring. I feel like, like God is helping somebody to know that you can trust him tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, God, that as we put our lives in, in your hands, God, you never, you never fail, God. Hallelujah. Though we may be flawed, we may be 
imperfect, God. You, you still, God, you see the substance within us, Lord, and you're working with us, God. You're bringing us through, God, to greater places in you, and we thank you, Lord. Thank you for all of our brothers and sisters here tonight, God, for everyone, God, who made it possible for us to hear this message, God, for people who have put in work ahead of time, God. We just, we thank you for all that you've done, Lord. And we bless you tonight, God, and we just pray that you would draw us closer together. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like I'm calming down a little bit. Amen. Hallelujah. With the challenges that God's people face in the day that we live, our gathering together is of the greatest importance, greater than it's ever been. Anybody say amen to that? This certainly applies to our physical assembly uh, in the same location, uh, being physically together in the same place. I do believe that this is uh, part of what it was talking about. Uh, how many of you know that, uh, how many of you know if you've ever been in a place where your life wasn't right and you came to church and just to look somebody in the face when you know you weren't doing the right thing? I know Christopher's never done that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> But how powerful it is, the face-to-face -face interaction with people and the corporate worship and the stand alongside of someone and hear them giving praise to God. What does that do uh, for you and I? There is a priceless value in us coming together in one place. However, what makes these gatherings so impactful is our spiritual bond and our focus on the same purpose. How many of you know we can come and we can, we can warm a seat? It, it, can anybody be honest and say you've been a seat warmer at some somewhere in your can you raise your hand so that other people know been a seat warmer anybody <laughs> but the purpose to come together uh, with a with a purpose in mind uh, knowing that uh, the opposition uh, there's such a great opposition against anything godly today and it comes from powerful places comes from it's spiritual wickedness, the Bible says, in high places. But how important is it for us today to be assembled together, not just in the sense of a physical uh, uh, location, but for us to be assembled with the same purpose in mind. Uh, it, it's, it has a greater importance, as I said, a greater importance than it's ever had in, in all of time. I, I believe that. Hebrews uh, 10, 23 through 25, you don't have to turn there. We're going to... Uh, go uh, to a few other texts, but uh, uh, it says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke uh, unto love and to good works. Read that again. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Verse 25, it says, not forsaking the, uh, the assembling of ourselves together. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. So there will be some that will do it, but God said, I'm, well, I'm not talking, I'm talking to you, he said. <laughs> Amen? As the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. Again, there's that purpose that we're coming together with. And so much more as you see the day approaching. So all the more, whatever we've done to this point, there's got to be an even greater effort to come together uh, than, than uh, we have in, in, in times past. The days, how many of you see the darkness coming into this world all around us? Hallelujah, but that's not cause to be afraid. It's, it should be cause to motivate us to get on our knees. Amen. Motivate us to come together in a greater unity. What God spoke through Paul so many years ago in the book of Hebrews still applies today. The inspired word of God is still speaking to the church in June 2021. And one thing it's still saying, uh, there's many things the God, word of God is still saying, but one thing it's still saying is to assemble yourselves. That message, uh, it's, it, it is just as much for us as it was for uh, the ones who it was originally written to. Yes, come together for church services, for fellowships. I, I, every time we have an opportunity to be here, uh, we ought to, not just to receive. Again, our purpose, we are uh, meant to give and to receive, right? So somebody may need something that I have. Uh, at a fellowship, I may share something with somebody. I may uh, help them to understand that as an elder that I've been through some of the things they've been through and may encourage them, right? So God needs us to be here for others as well as 
to receive from others. Somebody say it aloud, amen to that. Amen. Amen. Uh, but the things that, uh, the things that, sorry, I lost my place. Amen. Uh, yes, we, again, coming to, to whatever we can be here, important to do that. Um, but the, the, the thing is that when we come, we've got to have in mind that we are working towards strengthening the spiritual bond. We, we, are, we have opposition against us, and we have got to be working towards the same purpose. Somebody say amen to that. The definition of assemble, uh, one definition I found was to come together in one body or place. To come together, that was in Merriam-Webster's dictionary, to come together in one body or one place. Um, there are some common uh, synonyms of assemble. Uh, they are collect, congregate, and gather, and there's others, but uh, that's just to name a few. While these words mean to come uh, or bring together into a group, mass, or unit, assemble implies an ordered union, an ordered union. You notice he didn't say it would be nice if you came together. He said assemble yourselves together, right? We need to do that the more we see it approach. So an ordered union or organization of person or things, often for a definite purpose. Hallelujah. We have a definite purpose, don't we, tonight, church? Amen. Amen. If there was ever a time when we needed to be focused, when we needed to be focused on our definite purpose, that is now. Let's turn over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm going to start in verse 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. When you get there, you know what to say. Amen. I just, I, I want to say, if I look at any of you funny tonight, um, I'm at that age where you your prescription, you start getting different kind of glasses. <laughs> so I have that progressive thing going on. So if, if you're over this way, you might look a little fishbowl-y to me. I'm just, or on that side. So um, if, if I'm looking at you cross-eyed, it's my glasses. It's, it's my, I love y'all. I just want y'all to know that. <laughs> so the, the people who are laughing the most are the ones who have been through it. Can you raise your hand if you've been? Oh, amen, amen. All right. That's unity right there. We're all together. Amen. First Thessalonians 5, chapter 1, uh, in verse 1, it says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. How many of you know it's very obvious what's going on in the time and season that we're in? Right, Brother Ricky? It's, 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 it's very plain. I don't have to tell you. Uh, just turn on the news for three minutes. Go on YouTube and see the stuff they're trying to push you in the news feeds, right? Or uh, on your phone if you have a news feed on there. Look, just it doesn't take long to see the season that we're in. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Amen. For when, in verse 3, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. And they shall not escape. But brethren uh, are not, ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children. I like that. He's addressing us all together. Ye are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. All, look at all these, how many times it's saying us. It's referring to us to, together as a group. But let us watch and be sober. Verse 7 says, For they that sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Verse 8 says, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. Verse 9, it says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. 
In 11 it says, wherefore, comfort yourselves and edify, edify one another, even as also ye do. The definition of that word edify, many of us I'm sure know uh, what it means, but found a couple of definitions that I think um, really help to explain what the scripture is talking about. Uh, to edify, this is from uh, it's yourdictionary.com, says to edify uh, is defined as to instruct someone uh, in a way that enlightens them or uplifts them morally, spiritually, or intellectually. How many of you know we have a job? God's given us a job to uplift each other, to edify each other. Tell somebody, that's your job. Tell them, like it or not, that's your job. <laughs> the second definition is to build or establish. And I want that to be my life. I want that to be always be my heart, that when I come together with any one of you, that I always have the mindset to build you up. That whether it be uh, in your house, uh, you know, I, I don't believe that it's God's intention for us to always be tearing each other down in our, in our household, right? I don't believe that it's always God's intention for, uh, I, I don't believe it at all, that, his, that it's his will for uh, a child to always say things um, to their parent that tear them down or in the other direction. I don't believe that at all. I believe that God wants us to have a mindset that I'm always looking to help you to be better, not to try to be God to you, but to do my part. God, if there's something that you lay on my heart that will strengthen my brother or sister, let me have the boldness to say it. Let me have the compassion that drives me that I can't help but to reach out and help you if I'm with you. That's what edifying is about. Verse 12, it says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Just remember that uh, when it says to know them. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Just want you to remember. Uh, verse 13, it says, And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. This, again, this is talking about those that are over you in the Lord. To esteem them very highly. It doesn't just say to, you know, give them reverence. It says to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace uh, among yourselves. Hallelujah. I always want to be appreciative of, uh, there, there are, every one of you is important to me, but there are people that have had to sacrifice a great deal uh, to establish this work, for this to be here, for us to be here tonight. There are people who paid a greater price than I did. Anybody say amen to that? And I always want to be mindful of that in my coming together, in my, the striving for unity. Um, if I don't recognize the, the leadership uh, that God has placed here, then I'm never really going to completely fit in. Amen? Amen. Uh, verse 14, now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Did you hear that? Okay, I just want to make sure you, you guys have the same thing in your Bible. Now, now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Uh, uh, that word unruly means insubordinate, rebellious people. It just, it, it's in the word. I know we, you might not hear that much if you, you know, turn on the radio station, the Christian station. They might not really talk about those subjects, but it's all a part of coming into unity. How many of you know if there's something that stands in the way of unity, you've got to address it? Amen? You've got to move it out of the way or, or change it, right? Yep, amen. He says, uh, I'll read that again. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. But then it goes on to say, comfort the feeble-minded. How many of you know sometimes it, it is, um, it, it's easier to uh, ignore um, some situations? You know, uh, maybe there's somebody who could use our help and it's a little easier and, and you don't have to raise your hand. But I know I've been there when I was like, oh, goodness, um, here comes so-and-so. Anybody? I got to be honest since I'm up here. But have you ever said, oh, well, you know, I, don't, I, just, I just can't deal with it right now. I don't want to deal with that person right now. I see smiles. That's enough for me. Amen? But God said, and I'm not, I'm not talking about always, you know, I'm not talking about putting up with nonsense. But, but there are pe uh, people that God puts in our path to help. 
God puts some people in our path with the intention of us helping them. Even they're, they're feeble-minded, the Bible says. You may have someone who has a bit of a struggle in an area and you're stronger there. God's saying, comfort that person. How do you comfort them if you walk away whenever they come by? <laughs> I'll leave that one alone. Let's move on to the next. Support the weak, it says. Be patient. Be patient. I know we're scared. How many of you don't sing that word, um, you know, when you talk, like in, you have songs and you skip over words? Like you don't say, you know, try me now and say, so you like skip those words. I know because I know I've done it. Hallelujah. But, and how many of you know that there are some people, some people are easier to be patient with than others? Amen. She's laughing, so she, she knows. Amen. Some, some folks are easier to be patient with than others, but God didn't put a degree on it. If it's my brother or my sister in Christ and they're uh, weaker in an area and I'm strong, it, God, if you put them in my path, help me to have the mindset to help pray them through, to, to help even ad address, address the issue. How many of you know it's, it, it's, uh, uh, it's often... Uh, it, it can be challenging to, um, to talk about something with someone that other people just don't want to talk about. Other people avoid it. But it, it's telling us that we have a responsibility to help in that area. Amen? Amen. I, I, don't, I don't need a bunch of amens, but a few is helpful. Thank you. Amen. In verse 15, it says, See that none render evil for evil. It's very serious. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Both among yourselves and to all men. Amen? I, I, don't, I don't ever want to walk through this life um, vengeful, angry. Uh, I, I, it amazes me. Um, I have seen... I'll just say on some social media platforms I've seen, uh, I'll just say people who once walked with God and still claim to, but by the speech, by what's coming out of their mouth, the hatred, the anger, right? You, you, can, you can tell me whatever you want about your Christianity, but if your life doesn't align with the word, then the word has judged you. Don't, don't say I'm judging you. The, the word has already judged you. Amen. I want my life to be filled with nothing but love, with, with just respect uh, for people. I, I don't want any of that in my heart. And I, I, would, I would say to you that if you are connected to people in that place, I would say be careful. I would say be careful. Amen. I would say again, be careful. Amen. Amen. We're going to turn over to 1 Corinthians 12, verse 26. Oh, sorry, verse, 1 Corinthians 12, we're going to go 12 through 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 26. Get there, say, amen. Verse 12, it says, For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Verse 12, right there when it says, as the body is one, if you, if you look at me, you look at this natural being, it's very easy to tell that this is all one body, right? It's obvious. I'm one person, right? So shouldn't it be the same way uh, with the body of Christ? It's, it's a little different because when you look at us, as far as our outward appearance, we are many people. But as far as what we stand for, what we stand upon, our beliefs, when people look at us, they should see one body. Not division, not backbiting, not gossiping. They should look at us and see that we are one. How many of you want people to see that we are part of the same body of Christ, the same body of believers? 
Amen. I want them to look at us and see one. Hallelujah. Verse 13, it says, for by one spirit, everybody say one spirit, are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Amen. How we fit into the body of Christ doesn't have anything to do with our, our status, our wealth, our class. It lays it out, bond or free, right? All the, these different extremes that we may uh, be at in life. We're all different people. We're all, we all have different backgrounds. There's different education levels. There's different uh, levels. Of, some people may make a lot of money. Some people may not make a lot of money. That has nothing to do with the bond of the spirit that we're endeavoring to, to strengthen here tonight. Amen? Amen. Verse 14, it says, uh, for the body is not one member, but many. And in 15, it says, if the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? In, in verse 16, and if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? The interesting thing about uh, verse 15 and 16 um, is I believe they're drawing our attention to uh, not seeing the value in ourselves because it says, it's making a comparison. It says, if uh, the foot shall say, because I am not of the hand, I am not of the body. In verse 16, if the ear shall say, because I am not of uh, the eye, I am not of the body. So I believe that we're seeing an example of how, what we sometimes do to ourselves. Anybody ever fallen into trouble because of comparing yourself to other people? Anybody? Somebody raise your hand. Yeah. Comparison can be a dangerous, dangerous thing. Yes, God gives us examples to follow. Absolutely. But we must be careful not to compare ourselves to others uh, as our comparison might not be a fair one. You can look at someone else and think that they have no flaws and think that they've overcome everything and not know that they could be struggling with the same thing that you do. Right? Amen? Our, our, we, we, uh, I heard someone say a long time ago, they say we bring our best to church. Right? Right? I'm not going to come in here and talk about all my flaws and tell you, the, oh, I, I told somebody off at work today and I, 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 you know, I had a road rage incident. You don't, you don't see all that. I'm not, I didn't have that happen, by the way. <laughs> Just want to clarify, all right? That's, that's not a flaw I'm dealing with, okay? But, but we can, sometimes we do that. We, we uh, how many of you know we can be, uh, I know for myself, I am certainly oftentimes much harder on myself than I, than I am on other people. Amen? Uh, I can be brutal on myself. Um, you know, and, and some of that comes out of you wanting to do well. You want to, you know, you want to be a good Christian. You want to be strong. You want to, uh, you know, there's things in life that you want to accomplish, but we've got to be careful. Be careful not to compare yourself. I, I, I say that the best measure for us is the Word of God. Measure your life against that. As you get down on your knees and pray, say, God, what do you want me to be? Where do you want me to go? Let that be the greatest measure of where your life should be. Amen? Amen. Uh, verse uh, 17. If the whole body were an eye... Where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? So we're talking about a balance, about the, the importance of the different parts all working together. Um, and I, I think something that we're seeing, if you look around what I call the, the quote-unquote church world, is that you, you may see where things are a bit out of balance, where there's a focus on one part of what, uh, the body of Christ is put here to do. But I'm, I'm appreciative, I'll just tell you for myself, I'm appreciative of, of a church that uh, has a focus on prayer, has a focus on the word, has a focus on outreach, uh, to, you know, going to the, to the prison. I understand everybody may not have the same opportunity, uh, they may not have the same resources, but the mindset of this church is a balanced one. It, uh, we believe in missions. Uh, we believe in, in uh, you know, visiting the sick and the shut-in. It's so important 
that all these the different gifts uh, are in operation in this church. And I'm, a, I'm appreciative of that. How about you tonight? Amen. It's not like that everywhere. It's not like that everywhere. Amen. So we're going to move on uh, to verse 18. But now, but now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. Amen. Verse 19 says, and if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. God designed us, uh, he designed the body, designed the body of Christ, and he knows where we all belong. If anybody here is searching, if you're watching on Facebook and you're wondering where you fit, God knows where you belong tonight. Amen. And it might be in areas where you wouldn't think. Now, you've got to help me out here tonight. I know I asked you to raise your hands a few times, but if you are doing something or have done something in ministry that you never envisioned yourself doing, you never saw yourself doing, can you raise your hand tonight? Amen. Did you have moments like, uh, p perhaps it was like, um, you know, God said, uh, thou mighty man of valor, and you, 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 you were shaking in your shoes like, you can't be talking about me. It can't be me. Anybody said it can't be me. Anybody? Amen. But let God lead you into that place. Let God direct you into that place. And how many of you know some of that direction comes, it can come over the platform. It can come from, uh, the, you know, the pastor could, one day could say, hey, what do you think about ushering? Right? Anybody ever had someone literally come to you and, and, and talk to you about a ministry and you found yourself, you really felt God draw you to that place? I know for myself. I, I, I would say probably about 80% uh, of the things that I uh, have been involved in, that was, I never envisioned myself doing them. But as God laid them on my heart, I followed the call. I followed what he said. Let him lead you into it. You don't have to figure it all out. Just follow after him. Follow after him and he'll lead you where you need to go. How many of you know, and this is, this is uh, the importance of us uh, as, as elders, if you're meant to uh, lead others. It's very important that we remember it can be very overwhelming to become a part of something with so many moving parts, something that's been established, um, you know, long before you got there. You walk into the church and there's so much happening um, and you, you see all the different things that are going on. How many of you know that can be, um, that can be a little scary, right? So how important it is, it is for us at, at you know, at, like I said, at fellowships, if we're uh, maybe you volunteer at the warehouse and you know, understand that there are some limitations we still have, but as those things open back up, uh, how important it is because you never know how God will use you to help direct somebody else's life. Amen. Yeah, I want him to use me in that way. Verse 21, it says, And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head uh, to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body uh, which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And this is interesting now because now we're, we're, we're going the other way. We're saying the eye can't say to the hand, I have no need of you. Now we're talking about um, uh, us perhaps not seeing the value in other people. Uh, in, in those earlier scriptures in 15 and 16, we talked about uh, us not seeing the value in ourselves. Now, again, we are, we're looking the other direction. Can I say that I don't have need of you? We're talking about, again, not seeing uh, perhaps the value in other people. And I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that that can happen unintentionally. We don't uh, set out in, in, in life to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to belittle people. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to look at the value that's in them. But how many of you know that uh, when we have moments with people, we interact with people, um, and they frustrate us? How many of you know it's very easy to focus on the thing that frustrates you and kind of forget about the rest of the person? Right? Anybody? Anybody? Be honest. It's very easy when you go through uh, conflict uh-oh, I don't want to know. I don't want to know what they're talking about. <laughs> but it's very easy to zero in when you have a tense moment with somebody, right? Very easy to, to uh, you can look at them and look at that as 
that is the whole person. The thing that, you know, that they said or that they did, it, it, it frustrates me. And it's hard to look around that and see the soul. Amen. We've got to be careful. Got to be careful to still see the value. Amen. We've got to forgive. Got to forgive people. When you have those moments, when you have run-ins, uh, how many of you know, even with our brother and sister in church, sometimes it happens. If we'll be honest, if we'll be honest tonight, it, it will still happen sometimes because we're human. We're not, we're not perfect. We're working on it. We're working our way there. I hope we are. Amen? Amen? How many of you know sometimes we may not uh, see the value in someone simply because we don't know them? Right? How many of you uh, have ever uh, been to, when we had ladies' prayer um, in, the, in the prayer room on, what was it, Tuesdays? I'm telling you, I heard, I, I'll, just, I'll just tell you, it's Sister Janet. I, that woman prayed. I, I thought that, like, the, she was going to cause the rapture to happen. I know that's not how the Bible says it's going to happen, but I'm just saying. I, like, and not that I undervalued her before, but I, I came to understand um, the, the value that she adds and the other ladies that were in that room because I was around them. That's, again, the, the difference of... Uh, you know, I can say, well, you know, I've heard people say this, and, and perhaps you have too. Well, you know, I, me and God, have our own, we have our own thing. So, well, that doesn't fit with what the Word of God tells me. I'm sorry, I, I just, can I just, can I just pop that bubble? Can I just burst that tonight? The, me and God having our own thing and you staying to yourself, uh, like, it, you, that, that doesn't fit. It doesn't fit with what God uh, has spoken in his word and you would never have the opportunity to understand um, you know even the men's fellowships the things that people I've gained tremendous respect I uh, in a in a tutoring class and I won't I won't say any more people's names but there was one person who's been there and and uh, w one of the kids he well I'll just say he said something that wasn't that respectful another one of the teachers spoke up on his behalf he said you know I have a lot of respect for this man right here. He said he's held down a job for 30 plus years, I think it was at the time. He served his country. He's faithful to his wife. He serves in ministries. And, and that happened because we were in a face-to-face -face encounter. I'm just trying to give you some examples of, of things that happen when we come together, how powerful it is, our interaction. Amen. But as, as, and and uh, it was funny because I don't remember from that point on any more comments about uh, about that about that man, uh, and especially the fact that he was there uh, to help to help that that student, amen. Yeah. So uh, verse oh, oh, and also one other thing is sometimes we we don't value people because we see their flaws, right? Especially that can be a real touchy one with family because how many even know we know each other's flaws? Like family, we we know. Uh, uh, my my wife, God bless that woman. She's a patient woman. Um, but you know the the things that you that you do uh, that you know you don't mean any harm by them. But sometimes being in the same place with someone, the things that happen repeatedly can irk you a little bit. And and again, you can zero in, zero in on the mistake, the flaw, the well, you left the dishes in the sink again, and and right. You can get so zero, so dialed in on that, and for, and forget that that person is so much more than that. Amen, amen. So uh, I want to talk just for a moment about the importance of us working together. Working together, each part working together. It, uh, that scripture, the, one of the verses mentioned the eye and the hand. How I many even know how important um, the eye and the hand working together are, right? Um, how can I walk up to this, this Bible and turn the page if my eye and my hand don't work together? They've got to work together. For me to hold this microphone, for, for me to pick it up, my eye and my hand have to work together. How many of you know that a, a head uh, can't get too far if the feet don't bring it there? Right? Right? I can... I can I can want to go over there all I want to. I can think about it. I can think about walking over to that chair. But if my feet don't work right, I can't get there, right? Simple illustration, but uh, it's it, it just, again, illustrating the point of how important every single uh, part 
of the body is working together, not just me being great by myself. Amen? Verse uh, 22, nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. In 23 it says, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, which we think to be less honorable, think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. I, uh, I looked up uh, just a few, uh, just the function of a few uh, body parts that m it might be very easy to overlook. And I understand that some of what it's talking about is the things that we can't see, our internal organs, how many, <laughs> we, we, we kind of need all of those to be functioning pretty much for the most part. Our, our appendix, we can spare that one, but for the most part, we really need all of this to be working uh, together. But even some things that might be easy to overlook, like your eyebrows, for instance. Your eyebrows help to keep moisture, keep sweat out of your eye. Uh, you look at the way that they're oriented. They're oriented pointing outward to carry that away from the eye. Well, we know how important the eye is, but when you say that the eyebrow is important as well because it helps the eye to function. Uh, uh, one that was, it was funny to me, um, but it really is true. They talk about how the eyebrows help to convey emotion. Right, if I'm surprised, right, I raise my eyebrow. If I'm like kind of doubting what you're saying, you know, right. But it's it it's a part that it's it's very easy to kind of overlook the value of, but yet it has a function. The toenail. Um, I won't get into the foot washing that we um, had, but <laughs> there are definitely some toenails that are less comely than others. Like some that look like they need a file to, and like, Lord, how did I get this one? Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, he humbled me that night, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I think it was clean. It didn't smell bad, but it, it just, it looks scary. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, those of you who are there know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but the toenail, it protects the pointy pointier bones of the foot. We talked earlier about the importance of the foot, right? Carrying me to where I need to go. That toenail helps to protect that. And I didn't think of this one, but the toenail also, because it's a hard surface that presses against um, the flesh of your toe, it actually helps with sensitivity, helps you um, to, to avoid injury. If I uh, tap my toe against this, I can feel because of that hard surface of the nail, it's pushing against me and it tells me to tells me to stop right so something that's so easy to dismiss because you never see it well except for foot washings you don't always see people's toes right you don't see it you don't see the importance of it yet uh, take it away how many of you have you if you've ever um, have you ever ripped a toenail off by accident yes yeah yeah it makes you start thinking about how wonderful it would be if it stayed there when you when you have that Right? Yeah. Amen. The cuticle, the cuticle, the bottom edge of your uh, fingernail, that helps to, uh, it's a protective seal that helps against infection. That's something that's, it's, I, I can tell you, I don't, I don't sit there and think about how important my cuticles are day to day. Right? I mean, you, it's, right, it's so easy to just overlook it. But yet this helps, um, if, if, you, if you ever go in and have a, a pedicure and they're pushing that back too far, I'd say be careful because you can actually let in infection through, right? Something so that seems so small and so meaningless, but that infection can cause you a serious problem, right? Um, how, about, <laughs> how about ear hair? <laughs> like I said, I'm getting, I'm getting older and it's not just glasses I've been dealing with. I've got to break the trimmer out and what in the world is this? Yeah. Ear hair and, uh, and ear wax. Yeah, amen. That's the, we don't think of that as a comely part, do we? But, but yet it, these help to keep bacteria and debris from getting in and damaging the inner ear. How important is the hearing? And these parts all, they, they uh, play a role in protecting the body. Amen. 
So verse 25, it says that there should be no schism in the body. Amen. Like I said, that's what we're striving for. No division. I, they're just, there's no time for it. It's, it's a waste of time to, to argue over foolish things, to, uh, to, to uh, argue over things that are, are childish. It's, there's just no time. There's so much to do for God. And those things, they take away from uh, every time that the leadership has to deal with those things. And, and, I, and like I said, I, I understand. I know that they are there and they are happy to help people as much as they can. But there are things that they will have to waste their time with if we are not striving, striving to make sure that there is no schism between us. How many of you know we've got a responsibility to deal with those things? The Bible says if we have ought against our brother to go to him, right? I, like, I, I just, I'm getting to the place where I, I just, I don't really care what the source of it was. Where, where did it start? I just, I want to live peaceably with my brothers, with my sisters. I want, I want people to be free. If you're, and, and if someone else is not going to be mature about it, let me be mature about it. Let me go to them. Let me have that mindset. I'm striving to strengthen the bond between us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And, and uh, verse 26, And whether one member suffer, oh, let me go back to 25 again, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Same care one for another. In verse 26, and whether one member suffer, all members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all members rejoice with it. Hallelujah. If you're not unified tonight, if you don't feel like you're a part of what we've been talking about tonight, if you've gotten into a place where uh, maybe you've been, been running, if you're watching on Facebook, um, if you're, uh, maybe you could, you might be fine, I don't know, but uh, wherever you find yourself in life, if you find that you have gotten separated from Christ, that you're not in unity with the body, you still can be tonight. You still can be. If you've gotten off course from your purpose, if there's not unity in your home, if there's not unity in your family, if you, if you, if you've gotten far from the purpose that, that God intended, maybe you were on the path and you were, you were headed in the right direction and something came along and you got separated. You can get back on the path tonight. You can assemble with the body of Christ. Like I said, not just in a physical location, but you can, you can find yourself in unity with the body of Christ again. That place is still there. God is still able to restore the years that the canker worm has eaten up. Do I have any believers tonight? But God can still restore. God can still bring that uh, to pass. You're not alone tonight, as much as you may feel like it. I know I've made decisions in my life that put me in a place where, um, you know, I, I did things to separate myself from the body of Christ. And I felt alone. And... In a sense, I was because I had chosen to go where I was. But yet, like the prodigal son, there was somebody that was waiting for me. There was somebody that was praying for me. And someone is praying for you tonight. If you're wayward, if you're watching this, maybe you watch this a, a month from now on Facebook. If you're watching, God sees you where you are. God sees you where you are. And he's waiting for you to come home. Hallelujah. God is able to bring us into that unity. It, maybe you're not to that extreme tonight, but you've just gotten a little off course. Sometimes just we get caught up with the, the cares of life, right? There's so many things happening around us. There's so many things that can distract us. But my prayer is that tonight this will help you just to, just to refocus. Sometimes God doesn't uh, bring us this deep word. He just brings us a word and says, look, it, it's simple, it's straightforward, but will you choose to live by it? Amen? Will you choose to live by it? Can we stand to our feet tonight as our musicians come? If that's you tonight, if you, if you are not saved, if you're not a part of this body of Christ, tonight is your night. That can happen for you. And as that scripture said, we're all going to rejoice with you. 
as you make that decision. And if you're in that place where you've kind of gone wayward, kind of gone in your own direction, and you know you're not where you should be, you know you're not unified with the body of Christ, you can make that right tonight. You can start in the right direction tonight. If you're hanging out with the wrong crowd, if you're hanging around people that are tearing down the church and you know that you've been wrong, you know you've been listening to people that you shouldn't listen to, if you've been speaking words to people, hurtful words, things that don't edify, that can change tonight. God can set you in a new direction tonight. If, if, if any of this message touched you in any way, don't leave here without bringing it before the Lord tonight. Don't leave here without addressing the issue. If you've done someone wrong, someone has done you wrong, settle the issue. We've got a lot of work to do, church. We've got people that need us. And if we burn up our energy with things that don't matter, we're not going to have the strength to do what God called us to do. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just pray, Lord, God, that you would bring us into an even greater unity, Lord Jesus. We, we thank you, Lord, for our brother, our sister, Lord. Let us see the value in each one, Jesus. Let us make new bonds, God, new friendships, Lord Jesus. We're going to need them, God, in the time that's coming, Jesus. We're going to need each other, God, more and more. Help us, Lord Jesus, to take it seriously, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Help us, God, to take it on tonight, God, if we haven't, Lord. Some are already there, Lord, but for those that haven't, God, help us to take on the responsibility of building up our brother, our sister. Hallelujah. Of fighting for the church and not against the church, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We surrender our lives to you, Jesus. Hallelujah, a little more tonight, God. We're, some are already working, but we surrender ourselves just a little more to the call, God. Draw us together, strengthen our bond, God, so that it cannot be broken, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Draw us closer together, Lord. As a local body and as a part of the body of Christ, God, let us do what you called us to do, God. Hallelujah. Let us make our contribution, Lord Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's gather around if you're, if you're comfortable with doing so. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give it over to him tonight. Give it to Jesus tonight. I give to you. That thing that's causing you to be separate, give it to him tonight.
give it over to him tonight. I give you all of me. Give him that anger tonight. I give you all of me. Give him that unforgiveness tonight. I give you all of me. Whatever is holding you back, give it to I Jesus give tonight. You all of me. you to stretch out your hand. Uh, don't put your hand on the shoulder. They may not be comfortable with that yet, and that's fine. But just stretch out your hand towards somebody, towards your brother or sister. We cannot make it without each other. I said we cannot make it without each other. We must be unified. We must strengthen each other. We must call each other and tell each other we're praying. Just, we've got to be unified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you just call out to God on behalf of that one you're stretching out your hand to? Hallelujah. Just let them hear you in this corporate environment. Let them hear you praying. Let them hear you going before the King of Kings on their behalf tonight. Hallelujah. Come on and lift up your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bring us even closer together, God. We're going to come through together, God. I can't tell you how many times in my walk with Christ, how many times I can, I can scan this auditorium from one side to the other, and I could, I could tell you literally stories of people who have been there for me, who have strengthened me, who have helped me, uh, people who were good examples to me, people who were there when I was messing up, and, and you know, that, I talked about that face-to-face. -face. I remember... I rem I remember your mother, Brother Craig. <laughs> Those of you who don't know Brother Craig's mother, she drove, she drove, 
Connecticut Transit. She drove a bus. And then, yeah. Yeah, well, I wasn't clapping when I saw her, and I wasn't living right. <laughs> she didn't have to say a word. She, you know that, those of you who know her, she had that look like, mm-hmm. Brother Craig knows about it more than any of us. <laughs> I'd get on that bus and she didn't have to say nothing. I'd just, I'd, I'd just hang my head and I'd walk to the back, try to get as far away as I could. <laughs> but she, she's gone on. She's gone on to be with the Lord, but the impact that she had on me is, is still lasting today. Her life goes on. I remember sitting in a, in, in a fellowship and as we were talking about somebody got on a certain subject and I, I just, I began to talk about something because something they said sparked, how many of you have that happen? You have a conversation and it sparks a, a memory in you and, and I began to talk about something and I won't go into all the details but I had this realization that, um, I, well I'll share somewhat, it, it was a stand that my brother took. I, I, I appreciate him so much. But I realized the connection between the stand that he took years, years before that moment and the fact that I was still sitting there, that I was there in the, in the church when I had been gone and had done my own thing. The fact that I was sitting there was the first time that I drew the connection of the stand that he took and how it connected me back to the body of Christ. He was instrumental in that. But that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't been there in that fellowship face to face. Amen. I don't have time to tell you all the people who have influenced me along the way and I believe that you could, can you raise your hand if that's how you feel tonight? There's been so many people Somebody had to be willing to drive a van full of crazy teenagers. Brother Greg would be in there. Brother Greg would be in the back of that van. He'd be eating Fryhofer's cinnamon buns and wouldn't share them with nobody. <laughs> Brother Greg is one of the most giving, kind people I know. I'm just teasing him, just, just in case you don't know. Amen. But thank God for people who are willing to do the uncomely uh, task. How, how long did you have to, how, how many hours would you be on the road? Because you drove to Hartford, you drove to Windsor, right? And how many of us gave you gas money? <laughs> I'm just saying, right? <laughs> right? I can think of the sister... Uh, Brooks and, and Brother George, that their willingness to, to drive literally for hours on a Sunday, hours, right? We're, we're, there are so many things that need to be done to make all of this happen. For us to all be here tonight for the, the, the simplest things, from running behind a platform to um, ushering, thank God for the nursery workers Right, I mean, there's there's so many things that cause us to be all together. There's people in booths. There's people up in rooms, and you have no idea that they're there, but they're helping you to hear the word of God. We are all so connected. We all need each other. Don't ever, don't ever, ever take a task that you do for granted. We ought to pray every time we go to interact with another person. If we know that we're going to be doing any task, how many of it's always better? It is always better when you allow the Lord to help you with it. God can anoint the smallest thing. Amen. Amen. Well, I'll let you go. <laughs> but take that with you. Let's strive to keep that bond, to strengthen that bond, to strengthen one another. Remember, it's our job. Amen. And God's going to help us do it. God bless you tonight.